Uh, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Crypto News. And yes guys, we're still going on with our insane 2000 XRP giveaway. And if you want to enter, well, there's three simple steps. Make sure you press the like button. If you've done that, make sure you comment something down below. It can be your favorite crypto or the first time you bought crypto. And then third of all, make sure you hit the subscribe button with the notification bell on. If you've done that, you're automatically entered and uh, every entry ticket will count, guys, because if we don't give it away today, we'll give it away at the end of the month. So any comments you do is going to be really, really smart. Having said that, though, let's get over into the video because we got a lot to talk about today. I'll most likely have to split it up into two episodes once more because I think it's going to be another 40 minute video otherwise. And I, I, I've kind of stirred away from that. B.I.G.G. Digital Assets Inc. Subsidiary Blockchain Intelligence Group launches Ripple, XRP, and Stellar XLM on the BitRank Verified Risk Scoring Service. Very long sentence, very strange sentence, but let's put it into perspective a little bit. So yes, this big digital asset inc, owner of Blockchain Intelligence Group, a leading developer of blockchain technology research, risk scoring, and data analytics solution, is pleased to announce that based on customer demand, Ripple and Stellar have been launched as a part of BitRank Verified, um, also supports Bitcoin, Ethereum, ERC20, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and SV, but yes, XRP and XLM got on there now as well. And they made it seem a little bit better than it was, because at first, when I was reading into a little bit, I got sent this, uh, I believe in Discord, I only saw the title, and I was pretty excited because I thought it was going to be an exclusive. But no, after reading for a little second into all of it, you can see, all right, the other cryptos are on there as well. So, you know, it's just good, but it's not groundbreaking or anything along those lines. It's just good to know. Ex-president of Morgan Stanley, Bitcoin, Ether, XRP are moonshots. So the former co-president of Morgan Stanley, Zoe Cruz, calls cryptocurrency a potential moonshot opportunity. Cruz highlighted the advantages of XRP over the traditional financial system and SWIFT for cross-border payments. During a webinar at the Keenan Institute of Private Enterprise, Zoe Cruz, former co-chair of Morgan Stanley and strategic advisor to Ripple, discussed the implications of including crypto in a traditional investment portfolio. She discussed the advantages of traditional portfolio over crypto, the ideal allocation strategy, and the differences between crypto as an asset class and venture capital. At the beginning of the interview, Cruz also mentioned or commented on the current monetary policy situation compared to the global economic crisis in 2008 and explained that it is currently not clear what phase of the crisis we are in. As she discussed, we could be analogous, analogous to the crisis at the time in 2005, 2006, or 2007. In light of this, Cruz noted that while stocks and traditional financial markets remain in the green zone, crypto can be a means of to diversify. Wait, sorry guys, can be a means to diversify one's portfolio. In this context, she also referred to crypto as potential moonshot opportunity, similar to the boom in the internet stocks around 2000s. I look at crypto not like looking at correlations. So I look at these crypto investments and I believe in diversified investments as moonshot opportunities where your investments can go to zero or can make you a hundred times if that world continues to grow. It is rational to have five to 10% in that space, but not just Bitcoin, not just XRP, but the top contenders. Very smart, very true guys. I agree with this hundred percent. Either crypto is gonna make it very, very big, and that's then not just talking about XRP, or we're gonna go home, all right, and be broke as, as, as can be. Bro flat broke, just flat out broke, zero dollars in the bank. <laughs> That's the way I like living, guys. I like to go big or go home with this crypto stuff. Even though it's not my main revenue, I like to put m the most of my income in there just because I think it's one of the safest options. It's one of your best bets if you think about it rationally, right? To go 100 times or to go zero. And I believe Amazon also had one of those points. I mean, Amazon, at what year did they change their name for the first time? I don't know, but really, really way back there, uh, Jeff Bezos also told a lot of his investors 
there's like a 70% chance we'll go broke, right? And they were all like, oh, yeah, let's just still take the shot. Well, turned out it was a very good idea to take it because um, it turned out to be a very big moonshot. But up front, you can't really predict or know. It's, it's the risk. And with crypto, I'm going to say it's a it's a 90% chance we're going to do extremely well and a 10% chance the world's going to bet against it, meaning all governments will kind of go against it. Which, again, that 10% chance has another... I guess, 50-50 of reacting positively or reacting negatively to it. Because crypto was kind of designed as an anti-government type of tool, right, if you think about it. Um, but still, without government support or without institutional investors and things like that, you're not really going to get a, a good economy rolling. However, there will still be tons of use for it as that was basically its primary use case. So that, again, makes the 50-50. For if the government were to go against it, it would halfway be very bullish and halfway be very bearish. Because it's doing what it's designed for, but it's also taking away all the investors. So, yeah. Ripple Manager celebrates milestone for PayID. E-commerce integration next. Ripple's PayID has become the most widely used payment method in the XRP wallet pay burner. Co-founder of Ripple, Jeb McCallop, has sold over 11 million XRP on September 13 and 14. And Craig DeWitt said on Twitter, a thousand plus unique pay IDs issued since launch on PayBurner. Pay ID is now the most used way to originate PayBurner payments via XRP address. E-commerce integration is coming soon. And basically what this all means is pay ID is a lot more of a success than many people anticipated. And what a lot of people anticipated upon was the fact that pay ID was going to be successful. But it was going to go out very, very slowly as a lot of these places were to have to hop on to allow it. And as we all know, I think that does not really go that fast. Having said that, though, it did, in my opinion, go pretty damn smoothly and it did go pretty damn fast if you think about it. So what kind of happened here is Greg DeWitt has shown us, all right, a lot of players are are, are doing this already uh, on paper, or at least a lot of individuals there's use case, there is ask or demand, and there's also more opportunity following as this is just the start, it's just kind of a trial, it's just kind of a test, and more is really going to be flowing out from this quite heavily. Um, you can read more about that in this little part, but, but the most important part is just, this is just a start and that McCaleb is dumping, even though I don't really care about that as I have elaborated on at least 50,000 times. Binance coin runs out of luck as Binance is accused of laundering $9 million. BNB retreats from the recent high on a combination of technical and fundamental factors. Japanese crypto exchange Fisco filed a lawsuit against Binance. Whew! Pretty damn crazy if you ask me, guys. Pretty damn crazy. So, yeah. Binance coin was doing extremely, extremely good, but right now it's fallen down heavier than ever before, mostly on the idea that they could be scamming a whole bunch of money. Yep, yep, yep. However, the tide has changed for BNB. Thus, the or the sell-off might have been a factor. Yada, yada. Thus, the Japanese crypto exchange Fisco filed a lawsuit against Binance for alleged involvement in laundering nine million stolen from Zyf hack in 2018. A 33-page claim was filed in the Northern District Court of California on Monday, September 14th. Fisco believes that the hackers managed to convert the stolen coins to other assets and cash out on Binance due to the platform's lack of KYC policies. Now, I'm just going to say it out there out loud right now. I love Binance's, you know, KYC laws right there. And I don't think it really matters if you start to think about it because basically Binance, they'll, they'll check all the addresses, right? So... Even if they had KYC, these scammers could have literally just taken any guy from the street, you know, and just buy an account or just buy an account uh, somewhere on the web and just figure it out that way. If you guys get me, there are scapegoats for this type of stuff. Would the authorities be a step further? Maybe so. Uh, would, would more people be involved that way? Most likely so. And them not having that KYC requirement is only, it only has a, a couple of inconveniences where... You can't really have that next person. But Binance can still check all the addresses. So if they're sending money to Binance, they would have had to notice it that way anyway. right? The only thing you can't really track right now is what person had the account of exchange 
but still what account it was sent to and, and all that that's still known if you guys get me right there so that that it doesn't really make any sense to be angry about that but again that's just my small poopy brain analysis maybe this is a, a way bigger issue going on i personally think you can't really uh, take money from binance this way and i don't really think they laundered anything like that however did they aid in the laundering that's up for discussion you know did they did they not actively stop it again that's up for discussion Will this lawsuit work out? I don't really know. I don't really know, but I guess we'll see. Wouldn't be good though. Wouldn't be good. G plus D supports Christine Lagarde's demand to accelerate institution of the um, digital euro. So yeah, that's again something pretty cool that I just found. Not too big. It's just they're putting some pressure on all of this, guys. They are putting some pressure, which in my opinion is only good stuff. Blockchain Bytes, MicroStrategy's Bitcoin buy, that's basically they're buying a lot more Bitcoin, now $425 million worth, I believe it was, in total. Bitmain's Power Struggle, I guess everybody can get that, and Paxful's Goodbye. So yeah, you can see a lot of this stuff right here, and I must admit, Coindesk has a really, really good article for this, uh, and I really recommend people to read it. So I'm actually copying it right now, and I'm going to be sending it out in my Telegram channel, because as you guys know, I have a Telegram channel in which I would like to show you guys all the most important articles that you should be reading if you are up for it or if you have some time left. Because this stuff is just sometimes worth it, you know? It just kind of rounds up all the most important things that have happened and you can just quickly go through it. Maybe just read the titles and then move on. But at least you have some idea of what happened and you're not really left behind. Which, again, will happen really fast if you go out of crypto for a week. You really lack a lot of info in, in just a small amount of time. If, you're, if you don't update yourself. So these types of things can help. Mad Money's Jim Cramer fixated on buying Bitcoin, fears massive inflation. Talked about that in my earlier video. Mark Cuban-backed crypto firm pays SEC 6 million fine for 31 million ICO. So the SEC has come after a Seattle headquartered crypto esports and gambling platform, Unikern, for its $31 million ICO. SEC has settled with crypto gaming startup Unikern, it's freaking annoying, Unicorn, but why would you name it that way? Unicorn, it's 31 million ICO, notably drew investment from Mark Cuban and Ashton Kutcher, and Unicorn has agreed to pay a 6 million fine and seize operating its token. All I can say about this one is big freaking payday then, right? If they had to only pay 6 million penalty. Hmm. That's uh, pretty damn crazy. Well, of course, that's really not how it went. I mean, if you check out the, the building... The SEC announced that Unicorn agreed to pay 6.1 million penalty to the SEC, quote, substantially all of the company's assets, end quote. The SEC will then return the money to investors. Yeah, so that's basically an easy way to, you know, divide your money by five if you want to. Pretty cool if you think about it. 7.6 billion more ADAs were transferred to Binance when it's price shedding 30%. Still didn't check the videos out because I did this recording straight after the previous one as Again, I was talking about a lot of stuff and these two articles I had left even. Binance introduces and launches a second project, the Wing Project, which was pretty damn cool. Um, Binance, the largest crypto exchange, is launching a new project known as the Wing Project, a cross-chain DeFi platform for Binance users. I think it's a pretty big scam though. I mean, it's a big money grab, so I don't think it's good, but it's pretty damn cool because they're really progressive, Binance. And this one... XB price analysis, huge moving coming as Ripple consolidates. XB continued to move sideways this week as it trades along the 100 EMA beneath 25 cents. The bulls are slowly climbing, but it's quite negligible. And against Bitcoin, XRP dropped beneath the September support at 22.75 sat today as the sellers take control. All right, I have more that I have more, but let's see how far we're into the video. We are in 14 minutes. Okay, let's go for a little bit. You can run, but you can't hide. U.S. crypto tracing capacity on full display in civil forfeiture action. So the U.S. DOJ filed a civil forfeiture complaint detailing two hacks of virtual crypto exchanges by North Korean actors. And whenever I read this type of stuff, I just get so freaking mind blown. Because if you think about it, we can always blame the North Koreans. Because how are they going to know, right? Uh, they might know about us blaming them, but how are they going to defend because nothing that they sent will ever come out to us in our media. So 
if I were the U.S. government right now, or any other government for that state, for that matter, and I were to hack everything and I would take all the money, I could always blame North Korea, all right? If my 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 little uh, let's 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 figure, let's just you know uh, imagine something here. Let's your little cousin, right, steals your candy. He says it's North Korea. What's what's North Korea gonna say about it? It's only that it's really not believable. But North Korea ain't gonna defend. All right, you can accuse them all all you want. They'll just accept it all. Cause who's gonna defend their A North Korean spokesperson? I don't think so. I don't think you'll hear any of those guys on your television. I've never heard any spokesperson from North Korea talk except for you know the. The top guy, and maybe I should stop talking about this country before the video gets uh, completely blocked, because I know YouTube doesn't like that type stuff. After purchasing 250 mil worth of Bitcoin last month, MicroStrategy is looking to increase its crypto holdings. Yes, 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 they're still going pretty damn strong. And don't expect another Bitcoin price. Catastrophic dump, says analyst. Bitcoin's macro landscape is making current price levels look like a good buying. Willie will suggest as support stacks up at $9,600. Well, in my opinion, we're not really looking for another big Bitcoin crash either. But with the current situation right now with the US dollar and anything like that, it is very much possible. That's why I'm not really leaving any trail right here. I'm, I'm staying kind of neutral because a big crash is always around the corner, especially in times like this. So I'm not really letting out any opinion on that regard, but again i'm pretty excited for what this crypto world has to bring guys that was it for today's video hopefully you all enjoyed it another big one is coming out later today i got a ton of stuff to talk about a lot of xrp i got like 20 more things so make sure you stay tuned one or two hours gonna have another video stay tuned i'll see you guys again in another one